there are two things in life that are certain. And we are going to talk about one of them today. Taxes. Specifically, property taxes. No matter if you are buying, selling, renting a property, there are taxes involved. And thankfully, it does not have to be as scary as it sounds. As usual, we are here with insights from experts to help you look at tax differently. This is the Private Property Podcast. I'm Dumi. Let's get out. Let's get started. Congratulations to Tomo Fato Masekwa Ming for walking away with that 500 Rand cash prize from yesterday's show. Shoot your shot tonight and share this post and tag your friends. You could be that person to walk away with 500 Rand cash. So forward is forearmed. And when it comes to property taxes, it's time to grab your pen so you don't miss these five fast facts. Number one, before you purchase a property, be honest with yourself with your financial situation. Don't buy a home without taking the necessary property taxes into account. You will probably exceed your budget and this will result in serious financial implications that could lead to debt. It's always be safe to be, it's always better to be safe than sorry. Before you buy a property, you know what you're getting into. What is property tax and what's its purpose? If you can't answer this question, you might not be as ready as you think you are to buy a home. Ask the people who know about them, or even better, keep watching the Private Property Podcast. Number three, property tax revenue is pretty stable. It is far more stable than income taxes, which can change depending on your employment level or spending habits. Property tends to hold its value over time compared to other parts of the economy, making property taxes predictable to calculate. Number four, get an estimated amount of taxes you will have to pay before purchasing a property. Contact a, lo a local tax assessor to determine how much tax you'll be required to pay. It's good to have an idea of the figure of taxes you're about to pay before you buy so you can start preparing your budget. And number five. Remember, it depends on the type of property you are buying, selling or renting. The taxes differ with each case. Make sure you have an accurate figure from an assessor before you land yourself in hot water. Whether you're a first-time buyer or an experienced property investor, we hope that these facts have helped you to gain a better understanding of property tax. So our guest tonight is the founder of Bruno uh, Samal Attorneys. He, he's an admitted attorney and the director and, at, and head of legal at Inter Intergen. He brings a wealth of knowledge and experience with all facts that his firm, um, his firm areas of practice. His expertise lie in commercial, tax, and property law, as well as litigation. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome, with a rousing round of applause there at home, <laughs> Bruno Samal. Thanks so much, Jimmy. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. No, th uh, thank you for having me here. Our second guest is a chartered accountant and a tax and wealth preservation practitioner. His current role as an executive and head of tax at Intergen involves advising property investors, high net worth families and corporates on property portfolio restructuring and tax planning. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Chiliboy Mutiba. Chiliboy, thank you so much for joining us and it's really, really a pleasure to have both of you here tonight. Good evening. Thank you so much, Jimmy, for having me, and I'm happy, and good evening to the viewers. Let's jump straight into the conversation. I've got two armed men here, who, one who is a lawyer and one who is an accountant, to tackle property tax. So let's talk about the fundamentals. I'll start with you, Bruno. What are the fundamentals of property tax, and what are the, when do they apply and when do they not apply? Sure. So property t uh, tax is quite a broad term, so we need to look at... Uh, the different scenarios where property taxes could apply. Um, and one, uh, to begin with, needs to distinguish between property taxes or property rates that's payable to the municipality, because that's something different. 
Um, and then the property taxes that we typically look at when, when buying, selling, and leasing properties. So things, for example, like transfer duties when you buy a property is a consideration that you as a purchaser need to have in mind <coughs> when buying. Um, sometimes VAT might be applicable. So just in the sale process, there might be a situation where you need to pay transfer duty and or you might need to pay VAT. Um, then after the fact, one does need to consider when selling a property um, the implications of capital gains tax. Because if you sell your property at a higher amount than what you bought it for, uh, there might be a capital gains, which might lead to capital gains tax being levied. And obviously, in a situation where the property is being sold from a deceased estate, and that's uh, typically when a person passes away and the property needs to be um, you know, sold to somebody else or passed on to heirs, uh, there's also certain implications where you're looking at estate duty. And that's not specifically a property tax, but it's a tax on the value of your estate within which your property falls under. So just in the sale um, sphere, uh, those are a couple of the different tax types that one might, uh, one might need to consider. Sure, thank you so much for that. Uh, Chili Boy, I'll ask you to come in here as, as an accountant. Um, let's talk <coughs> a bit about what types of tax what does one have to pay um, during a property sale? Uh, yes, um, as Bruno uh, alluded earlier, uh, when it comes to property sale, uh, you potentially depends on how you held that particular property. If, for instance, you held that property in a long term, you're more likely going to be looking at paying things like capital gain tax. And for that matter, if you were held that property and you are in what we call trading, you are going to be liable for ordinary revenue taxes. So that is typically what you call normal tax uh, applicable. So you, the, the type of people that uh, you find that are subject to such type of tax are typically what you call developers because they're in the business of trading. But then if you are in the business of having multi lads and you hold those multi -led for in with intention for long term, then when you dispose such properties, you are going to be subject to capital gain tax. Sure. And, you know, you're speaking um, a little bit uh, to, to, to those who are buying, right, property sales. And I know a lot of our, uh, of our viewers are also leasing. So someone is asking themselves, do the same apply when we're talking property leasing? So when it comes to leasing, uh, we firstly need to under understand what type of property are you leasing. Let's speak maybe in terms of residential. So if you are leasing a residential property, meaning that you are you've got tenants uh, with that, so a residential property is exempt from what you call uh, uh, vet, um, what you call vet, uh, vet uh, tax taxable surplus for that matter. So which means that you're not going to be charging things like vet, right? Would you agree with me on the revenue side? But however, the one that you will be subjected to is what we call normal tax on what you would have made, what we call taxable income, having taken into account what you generated as a rental incomes and minus all those other deductible expenses. Then. The net balance, if it's positive and it's like taxable income, then you'll be subjected to what we call a normal uh, tax. Thank you so much for that. So, um, so enlightening because that is that is a, where a lot of South Africans find themselves leasing and you know um, mm. renting out um, they, where they are currently living. Uh, Bruno, mm. let's bring it back here and say, what are the kind of hacks that one can do in order to optimize um, their tax efficiency? So, I think planning is crucial, and I mean, this was one of the key tips that uh, that you spoke about. If a person plans ahead for possible tax consequences, uh, you can actually structure your, um, your property portfolio so that uh, it's as tax efficient as, po uh, as possible. And there's nothing illegal about it. I mean, this is all perfectly legal. It just depends how you want to do it. And this is where we start speaking about uh, things, for example, like buying a property in a company versus buying a property in your personal name versus buying a property in a trust. Um, there's, a whole, um, th there's a whole variety of different structures or vehicles, rather, that you can use to store these properties and to allow the flow of income from your rentals, for example, to flow through these vehicles into your pocket. But each one of these is a different permutation and different tax consequence. So if, if we can plan ahead and we know, for example, how many properties one person intends to buy, 
What's the intended use for these properties? Is it commercial? Is it residential? Mm -hmm. um, who's the ultimate beneficiary for these properties? Do they intend to benefit their kids on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, do they intend benefiting themselves, their elderly parents maybe? Do they just intend holding on to those properties very long term and not utilizing that money? Each one of these would give you a different example. Um, so for instance, the typical example I always use is holding properties, for example, in a trust. Um, and um, avoiding the need to have to pay things like estate duty because the trust supersedes your death. It mm -hmm. continues and survives despite your passing away and your family stays, uh, stays as a beneficiary. So, I mean, just one example like that uh, of proper planning could actually save you a lot of money, uh, sometimes up to 33% of your estate, as an example. Ooh. Thank you so much for that. Such great insights that we some of some of us didn't even know. Saving thirty three percent that's a lot of money. You know, when we're looking at it in rands and cents. And um, I want to now take this back to you, Chili Boy, and ask in terms of you optimizing um, tax efficiency, but also making sure that you stay on the right side of the law, because it gets easy when when people are now thinking about this in a way. Um, advice, you know, given to 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 yourself by. Um, people from the grapevine, you know, your friend did this and you know, this one did that. And, you know, what is the right way to ensure that you optimize it and ensure that you still stay on the right side of the law? I've always told people that um, the best way to actually leverage or uh, to, to have a tax efficiency, the number one key thing is record keeping, because the reality is that if you want to minimize tax legally, you will have to justify on other applicable supporting documents. Especially for instance, if you are a developer or you're flipping properties and you want to claim the VAT, so SARS will obviously ask you for to, to support such claims through invoices. So if you don't have uh, invoices for that matter, then you might have find it difficult to actually claim and then end up having to pay tax unnecessarily so. So I think that's one of the key things. And I think also one of the key things is, and Bruno just alluded to one is, to have a clear intention, what are your intentions when you are buying that particular property, right? The re why I'm saying this is how you, the intention of that property, if it's for long term or it's for trading, has a different tax implication. So once you are clear on that, I think then you will also have an optimal tax, uh, tax structuring. So I think also another thing with regard to that, what I've seen is those people that you find that he had a property, they stayed in it, and then now they're changing the use of that particular property now into long-term investment structure. I will say, uh, without going too much into the technicality, to say, because you're changing that usage, rather speak to a tax planner to say, how best do I then move this property? Because you might find yourself having not structured um, things at optimal level. So I think those are some of the key things that I can actually share with you, with people just to optimize their taxes. Sure. Thank you so much. We are we are closing our conversation and rounding it up. And um, I just want to know, last words from all of, from, from the both of you. Bruno, let me start with you. Sure. So, um, I mean, again, it goes back to planning. I don't think I can emphasize it more. Um, so, um, such benefit can actually be attained uh, just through putting pen to paper. Um, exactly what Shilly Boy said, things like record keeping. All of this falls perfectly into place if you know what you're doing, if your intention is to buy properties as an investment, for example, and you've got a good strategy and a good system to put everything into place. Because when you sell in 20 years' time, you want to have those invoices well in place so that when SARS comes knocking on the door, you're ready. Sure. And, and yourself, Chili Boy? Um, I think from me, the, the first thing is that when you're going to a deals, when you're going to invest in properties, be very clear. What is your business strategy? Number two, because then that influences also the intention and the objective of that particular property transaction. Because then you'll know whether you're putting that property in a trust, as Bruno earlier said, or in a company, or for that matter, you might invest in a personal money. So once you've got a clear objective on also how you're going to utilize the, the generated revenue, whether it's for reinvestment or is it for distributions to live off it, to support your salaries, as, as many say that they need a multiple streams of income to, to survive these difficult economic uh, conditions. So you need to actually be more clear so that then, then once you clarified your position, then you need to speak to the tax planners 
to say, okay, here are my uh, clarification. Here's where I'm going with my property journey. How would I then optimally structure my, my investment structure? And then once you've got that, and then you've got this tax planner that can assist you on, on going to save this, such investment structure, I think you'll be on the ball. No, thank you so much, gentlemen, and it was really a pleasure talking property tax with you. Thank you so much for taking our time and giving us these insights. You know, it's always great to have experts around the table to talk really um, important stuff about uh, property. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great night. Thank you so much, Jimmy, for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. Cheers. Thank you so much to you for staying till the end of the of our episode tonight. And it is time for me, as usual, to announce the winner of that 500 grand cash prize for the person who mostly interacted with us. And the winner for tonight is going to come up when I when the drum roll comes in. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for Happiness Maluleka, who is the winner for tonight's 500 rand. Thank you so much for interacting <coughs> with us and sharing tonight's post with everybody you think needs to hear this, this conversation. Join us tomorrow again for another Inside Packed episode. And also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to all our social media platforms. Thank you for joining us on the Private Property Podcast. My name is Dumi. Have a good one. <laughs>